Hey, so have you heard of this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hid it. Yeah, we heard about that in the court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Hmm. Something bad for Mr. Garita? What do you figure so? Well, before she died, so let's talk with a few of our friends. And she said, it looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Creator by that? Well, there is no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. Y you're welcome. It's on guard Miss Andrews. They're both at the detention center right now. There are still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to talk to tell me everything. Alright, well, I guess that's pretty much it. Well, Powers, thank you. And we will see you at the trial. Let's go back to the detention center and talk to Adrian this time. Hopefully. Yeah, there you go. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's go and talk to Adrian a little bit. Oh, it's you. Uh, sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was mad. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She cannot be clueless about this secret Mr. Correa had on Mr. Angard. Alright, well, let's... let's see... I'd like to ask you about Matt Angard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. That is the reason why we want to talk to you about this. We want to know who Matt truly is. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Angard. If that's the case, then why did he become his manager? And why would he become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. Uh, about Miss Celeste Impex. I had finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I... I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. Burn it? You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But... I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. In the suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Hmm. Why did you try to frame his down guard? That's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? Oh, yes. But not necessarily to frame him, thus getting you in trouble here. But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their job, so they figured it out, right? Um... Yes, they are so good that they can figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. <laughs> yeah, you're being sarcastic over here. I was about to say something. Not to mention that during that time, the police department and the prosecution side, for the most part, were a lot more corrupt than it is now. Manfred von Karma was doing his thing, Edgeworth was following in Manfred's footsteps of winning cases like him, Damon Gant became chief of police and started doing his own thing, detectives kept getting fired because of him, those were definitely not great times, I tell ya. Miss Angels. 
Um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? Hmm. Only one lock. Psych lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. Man. I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say... Revenge. Alright, well, I guess Agent's Psych Lock would be a good start before we even try and tackle Matt, but... Before that, let's go check other places and see if anything pops up before confronting Adrian here. Hey! Mr. Nick, you fell! Hey! That's the still that's the still summary theme song, isn't it? Yep. Yes indeedy. In all its full glory. Did you know that we managed to solve a case using this ringtone with powers? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Y yeah, I know. Hello? We're in trouble now, pal! Uh, come, come soon. Oh, I'll be back at this office really soon. But, what's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. B Mr. Urdorf, he... <gasps> oh no, no, don't tell me. Hey, Dorf. Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's no good. The end. Hello? He got cut off. What's going on, Mr. Nick? I just said we need to go back to the office right away. D then we should hurry back. Oh, I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about, Miss Nick? Put yourself together. Yeah, man, we gotta go. We have to check and see if Edgeworth is alright. Um... Maybe it would be good news. Somehow I doubt that. Alright, well, let's move. Let's move. Go, 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 go. What took you so long, pal? The driver couldn't stick around forever and had to go. Oh, thank God. You fucking nincompoop. The way you talked to us on the phone, it made me think that something bad had happened to Edgeworth. Well, what happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. Sweet! Eh? Did this quickly? And this bear is what gave them away, pal. The bear? I figured it out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Technically, Edgeworth was one to think of that first, but... Yeah. Um, but wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth that figured... Shh, Barrels. And? Go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to this crime. Uh, who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Met on guard. Huh? Met on guard. Your client. That's who, pal. And you already thought this thing's gonna get any worse. Alright, well, let's talk about this. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was. I heard it from the department store clerk, bro. This is the credit card received for the purchase. It's for. $3,800, Bill. That's an exact match to the price of that stuff there. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just a receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Algard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Algard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought that stuff there was Mr. Algard himself. My, my sight is failing me. This cannot be. Alright, I got a receipt over here. I'm gonna be give you... This is gonna be useful. Improving that it was Matt on guard that bought that stuff there. I bought the spy camera. So, what about the spy camera we found? Uh, that was a dead end, though. 
I mean, you can get this thing. You can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give this back to you for your, for you to file away to evidence. All right then. Thank you. I know you don't want to give up, though. I thought. I think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corrida's room was met on guard. Hi. Why would Mr. Angard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Mr. Andrews and Mr. Corrida in one of their rendezvous. I bet it's not good enough for me. And I doubt that it would be about a rendezvous, obviously. That or Matt on guard is quite a pervert. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. On guard, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Miss Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we will find out next. I'm scared myself. But I have to put on a good face for pearls. Met on guard. Wonder what have you done? Alright, well, I guess so. Thank you, Gumshoe, for that. Now let's go to the detention center and maybe use this. Uh... Oh, you're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, here's Matt. I wanted to talk to Adrian first, but. Okay. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. Alright, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Before we before we talk to you, Matt on guard, let's talk uh, let's talk to Adrian Andrews. Hopefully we can get that option. Okay. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Alright. Adrian. Actually, no, wait, 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 hold on a second. What the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> go back, go back, pedal a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. All right, let's uh, let's check out the places first before we before we delve into whatever Adrian is trying to say. Like, maybe something will happen if we go through these places. Like, maybe we can get some more information. Let's go to Viola Hall. Nothing here. Hallway. Nothing here. Corrida's room. Nah. So far, nothing else is happening around here, so that we can get more informa information from people. A lot harder is nowhere to be found. What about uh, Metangard's living room? It looks like no one is around. Um, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches in his face. Phew! Hey, little guy. Yeah, there you are. I guess you're still awake, are you? Hey, <laughs> come on, let's play. Alright, well, <laughs> we don't have time for us for that. I wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. Alright, well, I guess, uh, I guess the butler is not awake. Alright, now we shall go to the criminal affairs and uh, talk to... Uh, Adrian Andrews here a little bit and uh, see about breaking her psych lock first. Alright, Adrian Andrews. It's time that we do this. Once again. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. On Guard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. On Guard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge on the out on Matt, and that's why? V what an absurd idea. I, I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Oh, Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There is something of someone in her past that would make her take revenge. And that person is definitely Celeste Impacts. She is very important to you, Agent. So important that you would take revenge for her. C Celeste. 
There is only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings. And even revenge. And that is Miss Impex's suicide. But what he tried to say... Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hid her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned it. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. On Guard, it would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? Uh... Well, let's see. Let me think about this, because... I... I don't see it. <laughs> I mean... I don't... It's, hmm... What should I even present here? I mean, there is no evidence here that would showcase the relationship between the two. I mean... Looking at Matt and how suspicious he acts whenever Celeste is mentioned, it tells me that there is something there, but... <laughs> that is about it. We have never gathered any evidence or heard anybody else talk about Celeste and Matt knowing each other. Hmm. Alright, let's let's back it up. Retreat. I think we need a different strategy for this. I don't think I have enough in evidence yet. I should investigate and gather some more clues before I try again. Not to mention that we can get to that point like we really, really fast. There is no biggie. So, hmm. Let's go to the criminal affairs. I mean, I could ask people around about all sorts of evidence, which I think I'm gonna do that like right now. Let's see. What can I, what can I present you here, Will Powers? So that I can, t you can tell me. Nope. Nothing. Zilch. Nobody gave me anything up until now. And Edgeworth is nowhere to be found, so... I guess... Maybe I maybe I should start confronting Matt on this. Granted, he has five locks, and if I don't have that one piece of evidence, then I'm screwed, but... Eh, it is better than nothing at this point, because I still have no idea what kind of evidence I, I should point towards the relationship between Matt and Celeste. So, let's start doing Matt's psychologs here. Alright, alright Matt. Let's get down to it. Let's, let's talk about some stuff. Prepare yourself! We have a psychologue battle to do! Oh, a really, really long one, man. That's secret. Alright. Let's do this. Now, let's hear what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Kurita had been successful in his plan? Would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about one, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but... I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on! I was in the middle of a nap! Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you pay close attention to Mr. Corita. Especially on that night. Hey, you wanna know how we figured that one out? With the help of uh, the big friendly bear that we found in Juan's room. Who had... This particular spy camera in its eye. A camera that you bought it to spy on Juan. Someone used this camera to secretly film Miss Corita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then send the images the camera took with, this with the transmitter. Wow. But dude, 
What was this camera you were talking about hidden? It was hidden inside the bear. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. <laughs> Fantastic. One lock, four more to go. I guess one had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm, you sure did? Who else could he be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corita was... It was you, Madame Guard! You knew how much of a bear fighter Juan was, so you sent him the deadliest one of them all! One that spies on Juan having rendezvous with other people, with other women, just so that they can fill the void inside your heart, that you'll never have somebody to love you! I think that's, that's a bit too much, isn't it? Miss on guard, do you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met M Mr. Bear before, dude. Oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On guard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I'd think I was in some sort of trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just putting my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. I mean, really, this is... This is child's play at this point. It was obviously you because... I have the receipts. And these tell us that you bought a giant stuffed bear. And a lot of dirty magazines. What do you have to say about that, pervert? I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ongard. It's from when you bought that stuff there. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800. This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. Don't lie, Mr. Ongard. First of all, there, there is no way for a receipt to say the amount of money spent, but not the name of the item that was bought. Second, that toothbrush must have been the best toothbrush in the entire world for it to cost that much. Not only will it clean your teeth, but all the bones inside your body at that point. It will make all your bones shiny and all that. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go out and buy me one of those bad boys. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory, and it's got elven hair for bristles. You elven hair? Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk really remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. <laughs> Alright, three more to go. We can do this all day, Matt. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I cannot help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let, let's, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. Because you have no choice but to listen to us and tell us the truth. It is a matter of trust between a client and its lawyer, and as long as there is no trust and you hide stuff from us, then you are in big, big trouble, sir. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is, of course, it will be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. The reason you hit this camera in Mr. Corita's room and filmed it in secret is. Mm. Okay, um. 
Okay, I guess I'm gonna need to think about this a little bit. The reason. I mean... I could say that it is because you wanted Juan dead, but... Hmm... Well, we know that Metangar sent that bear the night of the murder. And that is because he knew that Juan Corrida was gonna was gonna reveal something huge at the press conference that that might ruin Matt's career. So you wanted to keep an eye on Juan with the camera. It is because of the secret that Juan was gonna reveal at the press conference that you filmed the room he was in. Um Miss Vanguard? Dude, how about you take that bear home with you and talk to it? I'm sure Mr. Bear will talk with you about as much as will as I will, which is not at all. Ouch. Oh shit. Um. Okay, I only got like one more shot at this. I have to somehow get it through his head, I'm not giving up. So, is it time to throw in the toy yet, dude? Sorry, but no. I'm going to find out what I want to know, because I must. Hmm... Okay, well this is totally not good. One more mistake and I'm doomed. I mean, the only thing I think, the only thing I can think of is, hey, you wanted one dead, plain and simple. You were spying on him so that everything would go according to plan, and have him killed. Proof for this is, well, pretty much the picture card over here, that tells us that you hired an assassin to kill him. All right. Well, what is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly the Killer. And I'm sure you know him, don't you? She Shelly the Killer. Walking on type, walking on tightrope here. And we still have locks to break. Well, again. One more mistake and it is game over for me. Th that's ridiculous! W why would I know some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um... This is it. I finally starting to get to the truth. I cannot afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Metangard. I know why you know Mr. The Killer. It's because... You are his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera... That means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly the Killer to assassinate Mr. Juan Corrida. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... YOU, Matt on guard. <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. S so, you're admitting it? That you hired Shay the Cure? That you're the mastermind behind this? But, Mr. On Guard, you really did hire? Hold on a second. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult, consult yourself. I guess you don't really have anybody else to help you, so you're calling yourself. 
consult myself. Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mrs. Lawyer Dude. Whoa. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I am met on guard. Uh... Yeah. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you really... You are Shelly the Killer's client? Are you... I mean... Is this your split personality? My god. Nefarious, do you see this shit here? In all its glory. <laughs> now this is getting more and more interesting. A professional assassin, serial killer, and now a psychotic one. You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands at this, did you? What, what do you mean? And that woman, Agent, was quite brave herself. <laughs> Trying to stake the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. Um... Mr. On Guard? May I ask something here? Where the hell did you pull that glass of wine from? <laughs> you really don't want to know, Mr. Detective. And I'm not talking about the glass specifically, but the liquid especially. But all I care about is that Juan is dead. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? D that's... you're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on. And let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why didn't you hide the video camera in? The weakling soon believes the words of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Angel's secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe in anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. He's got his face in the crime scene recorded on it. Preserved for all time. With that, I can kill him at bay, and even blackmail him if I want. That's right. That video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can't. Good enough an answer for you, little girl. Why? Why would he kill Mr. Kurita? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Kurita had been able to give it, then Mr. Angard Seeker would have... Ah, oh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. <laughs> How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Correa ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face. And people will swallow anything you feed them. <laughs> Agent Felfred. The assassin, too. Oh, and all can I forget. Even you, Felfred, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone. All working their butts off for me. Matt on guard. 
Oh, did that leave you speechless? <laughs> what a shame. Well, there is no beating around the bush here. You are quite a piece of shit. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet.